I hail from a remote village in Tirunelveli district. When you look at the uh, country, there are two uh, different Indias. One is well-connected, you know, you click the button, you, you know, last, last speaker was answering the UI question. You click the button, immediately everything comes to you. But on the other side, uh, there are struggles. You know, the, uh, the uh, urban-rural divide is so much in our country. For each and everything, let it be a student or a teacher or whomsoever, they have to really struggle hard to get it, even to understand how to, uh, you know, make a small school project. They have to wait endlessly for the availability of certain uh, you know, raw material and things like that. So from that background, when we really come up and see which is very, very crucial when it comes to fundamental, basic, food, clothing, housing, you know, this may be our first lessons in the class, but then Later, you will also get exposed to some of the luxurious material, car, telephone, and, you know. At a time when we really <clears throat> look at the scenarios around, even to get the life-supporting systems for many of our countrymen were completely, you know, they were suffering. So how to address that? That was the first challenge, you know, as a school, uh, you know, student, even to come to school itself, especially if it is a girl child in the rural setting, even today, it's a big challenge. So how to address that? That was the first and foremost question that came. And I strongly believed at that point of time onwards is science can only offer the solutions. If you pursue science in a very deep way, science is you know, science is, in another word, if I have to put it, if you seek the truth behind each and everything, you can really solve the problem. I will put it that way. That inspired me to get into science itself. And within science also, if you really look at, there are several disciplines at that time. Today you have a lot of options within science and technology uh, platforms. But in those days, if it's arts college, there are one physical sciences and biological sciences. And biological sciences, in fact, it is much more interesting compared to physics and chemistry for me. I have to put it that way. Then only, there nobody will challenge. <laughs> Otherwise, no, biology is understanding the fundamentals of life. At that time, it was 30, 40 years of, after the discovery of DNA by Watson and Creek. Still, uh, you know, transgenic technologies were not uh, that much, you know, developed. People were uh, talking about, yes, we, if we understand uh, genes perfectly, then we can uh, also explain about certain traits in the body or we can cure diseases. All of them are in theory. Slowly, it was also developing. So I took up uh, botany as my, you know, um, area of uh, focus and then I pursued you know there are two words here work to become not to acquire if I have to say basically the single word for this is to follow your passion so botany we I took it because it helped me to understand the diversity of life in the in the vicinity I hail from a village where the river Tamrabarni was flowing and uh, from flowering plants to aquatic plants and uh, so many beautiful material are around and to even understand them, to even, you know, when we study botany, there will be two set of people. One afraid of botany because of the scientific names and another one love that. They, you know, want to get the correct scientific name for each and every organism and things like that. So that was a challenge. So. Amongst our friends, there will be challenge at least 100 plants if I can tell the right scientific name. Then there will be a reward. And every time when we visit some forest and uh, things like that, then the excitement, in fact, you know, explodes, I'll say. So with that, we started looking at uh, the various uh, plants and things like that. But 
some, something somewhere, something is missing. So what is that? We understand a lot of science, we are able to get new knowledge, we are able to really tell this and that and also get connected with the global uh, scientific community, but still the answers for the suffering of our fellow men in the country, especially in the rural setting, we are not able to address. That is where, you know, at that time I was, I was just completed my PhD and went to London to pursue my postdoctoral research, came back to India. And at that time I met Professor M.S. Swaminathan, who was really talking about developing solutions, sustainable solutions for addressing for the various uh, problems of the society. That is also at the time when issues like climate change, today everybody is afraid of. Even the developed nations are wondering whether their production system, meaning the agricultural systems where we get the food, will it be intact in the event of climate change? Will there be any challenge to that? And if, if it fails, how we are going to feed the millions of peoples around the globe, okay? And the mounting levels of malnutrition. See, for example, in India, even today, well, let it be, it, it is not just the urban-rural divide. If you really look at the, uh, even within urban community, if you really look at nearly 53% of Indian women between the age group of 15 to 49 have anemia in their system, body. How to address that? You know, these are all some of the, uh, you know, very big challenges that is coming in front of us. And I, in the first place itself, I told you, science can only offer the solutions. How to really get the problem right and also give solutions so that, that it will be easy for the policy makers, makers to adapt it and also help us to come out of these issues. Forget about the wars and uh, other, uh, you know, human-made conflicts around the globe, but these are all some of the naturally occurring, naturally, you know, the, the natural uh, things that are coming in front of us where we need to provide answers so that at the end of the day, what is the big deal? We want to see equality among all people, irrespective of caste, creed, or uh, for that matter, rich, poor, or any um, you know, denominator you put. And everyone should have three square meals a day, nutritious meals, so that nobody go to bed hungry. Having said that, then you start exploring the possible pathways. Biotechnology is emerging. At the time when we started, I mean, I started my you know, college education, it was BSc Botany. But then later, we also, I also learned the nuances of modern biotechnology, microbiology, biochemistry, all these things put together. Then you understand how exactly you can you know, design experiments so that you can come out with wonderful material which can make still crops growing in salt-affected water. You know, when I said climate change, most of our uh, coastal areas, you know, we have a very vast coastline, more than 3,000 kilometer coastline we have in the country, right from Gujarat coast to uh, West Bengal coast. These areas are going to get affected because of the increasing levels of sea. And when that happens, most of our agriculture systems, we cannot plant the same rice plant and get the harvest and things like that. When we are going, how then we can combat? With the science, you will be in a position to really uh, come out with new varieties. That's the reason Madam explained to you about the collection of various saline tolerant rice varieties that are growing all, all along our coast. We also collaborate with International Rice Research Institute to find out solutions how to really. So why I'm telling you all these things is science also has very exciting carriers to offer. There are a lot more things to, you know, discover. Even from, for, for that matter, if you study, uh, you know, biology, within our own country, we can discover new species, new algae, new fungi. From, and uh, now you can also develop new varieties, which can uh, give you much more yields. 
the new bacterial species which can uh, address your nitrogen fixation in the soil. You don't need to add any fertilizer. There are beneficial insects which can help us to reduce the pest population. Like that, there are several avenues you can follow. So pursuing science will help you to really shape up a very classic character, uh, you know, profession and also help the community at large. Holding just a PhD is not is just enough. Your intuitive mind and also your passion to discover new things. That's how when I, you know, after my PhD, I was more into just understand the uh, types of uh, species that exist in a particular location. But that was not just enough. Today, if I just going to use my uh, background, whatever I acquired through my PhD degree, that is nowhere good. Nobody will even think about uh, taking my expertise for developing a challenging program in science. That's where we have to blend a lot of new skill sets. You know, every day you have to learn something new so that always you can stay at the cutting edge. You can offer some best solutions to the uh, issues that are emerging. Okay, so from looking at the diversity to understand the, the uh, advancement in science, like ChatGPT, in the biological sciences also, new techniques and tools are coming for developing better products, okay? When we uh, first understood the uh, structure of the DNA, from that to today, even we, there are people are talking about developing, there is a very unique field called synthetic biology. People are trying to develop uh, bacteria, synthetically develop a bacteria so that they can command to it and it will execute the job in the, in this is a, you know, I will say, an interface between uh, life and the uh, non-living system. To that, to, to that level, science is very exciting and there are very many opportunities to pursue, okay? Um, I can keep on going. There are a lot of uh, challenging work my uh, group, my uh, foundation is doing. Professor M.S. Swaminathan really uh, put up this foundation in Chennai to look at how in various dimensions, various domains, we can link science with society. One major program is to look at the coastal areas, how both uh, land and sea-based uh, uh, you know, issues we can address so that we can improve the livelihoods of the people. We can uh, uh, double the income of the farmers, double the income of fishermen, reduce the, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, when they venture into the sea, they don't know if the storm is coming or something like that. So how we can provide them the right kind of an information so that they can quickly catch the fish and come back safely. Similarly, looking at the various uh, diverse food, group, food groups we have, how to address issues of malnutrition, how to bring in equity among this, um, um, uh, equality among communities. You know, in the, in the country, if you also look at, there are, you know, very sorry to say, even today, in the name of caste, creed, we have divisions. You know, these things need to be ironed out. Every human being have to live with dignity. How we can bring those kind of changes? That is where we have to employ science. And uh, I stop here. If you have any questions I wish to answer.